Welcome to sunny Fresno, California for some USL League One action. We are at the campus of Fresno State University. Central Valley Fuego FC hosting one at Knoxville SC. And we'll take a quick peek soon at the standings. Both these teams at the bottom of the standings in League One. Central Valley Fuego coming in at 11, but winners of two straight, the longest active win streak in the league. One Knoxville SC, on the other hand, they've been in a tailspin. They are at nine in League One. For Fuego, it's been all about Maximus Eck lately, youngest player in league history with two goals. His first goal came in the game against Lexington, and then last week against Charlotte, he had the equalizer, Jordan Chavez. He had a fantastic week as well, squaring pass to Eck, who put it away, and it's just been Eck's gonna give it to you recently for Fuego. As for one Knoxville, it's been Jimmy Villalobos providing a lot of the offense. This assist coming for Angelo Kelly, who is suspended tonight for Knoxville. But check out this banger from Villalobos from last week. The opening goal against Chattanooga Red Wolves, his former club. Ouch. Absolute screamer. One Knoxville would lose that match 3-2. And it's a chance for one Knoxville tonight to right the ship after four straight defeats, looking to get their first win in a long time. Central Valley Fuego, on the other hand, going for their third straight victory. Kickoff when we return here from Fresno. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Fresno, Fuego trying to make it three in a row, but one Knoxville this season has had the upper hand against Central Valley. They have not played these two since April. Uh, the first matchup between these two sides was a 1-1 draw uh, between one Knoxville and Central Valley. And that's uh, for one Knoxville against Fuego. It, they should have won both games. 38 shots, 10 shots on goal in the two games, but only two goals. The first game, a 1-1 draw. The second game, a 1-0 win. The winner for one Knoxville after that missed penalty on this rebound was Vanderplaum, who is not in the lineup tonight, but that was in stoppage time. So it took a while, even though they were down 10 men, Central Valley work. Taking a look at tonight's lineup, Central Valley Fuego FC. It's a bit of the same lineup from last week uh, with 
You see Forbes and Eck up front. Uh, Chavez in the lineup as well. Had a goal last week. Ozzy Ramos is really the creative engine for the Fuego. Leads the team in both shots and chances created. As for one, Knoxville SC. Uh, five changes this week. Their most from one match to another. Uh, in midfield, Sam Fletcher gets his first start. And Jake Keegan is the man to watch up front. Five goals that leads the team. However, he hasn't scored in two months. Looking to get back on the score sheet today for one Knoxville. So it's time for kickoff. Here it's 7.35, now 7.36 p.m. Pacific time. Here from Fresno, Maximus Eck lined up over the ball. Fuego wearing green, they're the home side, and we're underway. The light pink uniforms for one Knoxville. Seven games winless for Knoxville, led by Mark McKeever. The Scruffs have been scuffling a four-game losing streak. Last week, a 3-2 loss in heartbreaking fashion at home against the Red Wolves. As that long ball, no one really home for it as Cromwell pounces on it for Fuego. But I talked to Mark McKeever uh, before this match, and he just said that <laughs> It would, three points would just mean so much to him. He put it this way. He said, if you put your hand on the table, I would bite it off for three points this weekend. He wants it for the happiness of the players. On the other hand, Central Valley, back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season, looking to make it three straight. There's Villa Lobos. And taken down Jake Keegan. It's a foul on Harold Hansen. It was a right back by trade, but he's been the six for the Fuego. Stepping in nicely in the defensive midfield role. Last five matches for Knoxville, 0 4 and 1. They had three draws before their four game losing streak. And that is turned over. Maximus Eck has Forbes to his right. And it's just, just past Forbes. It's all the road graphic. That, that is a good sign for Knoxville with two wins on the road, including their last trip to Fresno. And in a one-nil victory for Knoxville. And the Fuego, three losses before, two straight wins. So they're two and three in their last five. Two and six at home. Just mentioned that loss to Knoxville. They, they drew uh, in Knoxville. Mark McKeever, head coach of one Knoxville, the Motherwell Scotland native. Former head coach at Young Harris College in Georgia. He was there for 19 years. Opportunity here for one Knoxville as Keegan tried to get it from a tough angle but couldn't quite find the angle. And a hard slide tackle there by Waldeck. Deleuze plays it back for Central Valley's goalkeeper, Mitch North. And that one rolls out. So an early opportunity for Fuego for this El Mexicano corner kick. To take it for Fuego, it's Omar Limus, the 24-year-old from San Jose, California. Central Valley, just four set-piece goals. That's the least in the league. And no one's home for the delivery from Limus, so it's a goal kick for one Knoxville. 
Back in goal for one Knoxville, Sean Lewis, who's missed his last uh, four matches. Had a concussion and a neck injury that kept him out. He kept a clean sheet against the Fuego back on May 1st, the 1-0 win for Knoxville. So pretty comfortable in net here at Fresno State Soccer Stadium. This is the first of three away games for one Knoxville. They'll visit Union Omaha next week. Then it's forward Madison. Next home match isn't until August 18th. As we see Adam Smith, who's coached for the Portland Timbers, Fresno FC, Sacramento Republic. And Fuego's got a little bit of that uh, new manager bounce. Two and one since Smith took over for Martin Vasquez. It was a one nil loss for Fuego against Madison in his first game in charge, but since then, 2 1 wins against Lexington and Charlotte back to back games. Last week was a comeback victory after trailing 1 0. Game before that, they were playing with 10 for 60 minutes and still pulled it out against Lexington. Coach Smith said they took a lot of confidence from that win. It's a throw in for Gabriel Claudio, who scored in his only start this season before this one, a 2-1 win over the Greenville Triumph on May 21st. Positive play here from Fuego FC. Crossed in by Forbes and headed away. Only as far as Hansen. Still Forbes. And letting it roll through is Ramos, the captain tonight. That's a goal kick for one Knoxville. There's Billy Forbes, Turks and Caicos captain. 22 caps for his country, 12 goals, 8 assists. He has two assists, that actually leads the team. Assisted Jordan Chavez's game-winning goal last week. North under pressure, slipped. Chance here for one Knoxville. Played wide by Keegan. Oh, nice feed by Villalobos. Centering pass inside, that's just wide. Early chance for Jake Keegan, the team leader in goals with five. Showing a little bit of that rust. It's been two months since his last time finding Twine. Left-footed shot just wide of the far post and showing his frustration there. Wasn't a clear-cut opportunity, but that, that's been the problem for one Knoxville. The finishing touch hasn't quite been there. Keegan, of course, uh, one of the talismanic strikers of League One, 27 goals, second most in USL League One history. It's one Knoxville who has the early opportunity. I expect them to dominate possession. 54.3% possession, uh, possession this season. That's tops in the league. Nice takeaway there by Lemus. Forbes is held up. And it's a foul on Danny Fernandez. Fernandez, the Spanish international. 14 appearances. This is his 11th start. As Lemus switches play to the left. It's Cromwell. Finds Lemus. Tries a long ball for Eck. Maximus Eck. Oh, second touch. And a foul is called offside, actually. Eck just couldn't hold his run. But that first touch was brilliant by Eck, who scored two in his last two. 
Maximus Eck, first professional goal came two games ago. As that looked to be off the hand of Chavez, but no call. Hansen, the DM, playing up, switches it wide left. Cromwell into the area, and that's comfortable for Sean Lewis. Good for him to get on the ball early in his return. A little bit of pressure here in the 10th minute for Fuego. And another catch for Sean Lewis. Select, the official match ball supplier of the USL League One and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit www.us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. And Lemus tried to find Forbes there, but it's out for a Knoxville throw. One Knoxville, an expansion side. Played in League Two last year. Off to a hot start at the beginning of the year, but seven games without a win now. And four straight losses. Chavez and Forbes pressing. And it's out for a Knoxville throw. Claudio. Nice pressure there by Lemus. Drops it back for Chavez. Deleuze. That's back to North. 16 games, 16 starts for Mitch North. In goal for Fuego FC. Chested down by Eck. Over the top looking for Falk. Victor Falk getting the start today for Central Valley. Did not play against Lexington. There's Adrian Vera, who assisted Chavez's goal against Lexington two games ago. Vera from Norwalk, California. Falk. Back to Vera. Falk into the area and out by Knoxville. It will be a deep throw in for Fuego FC. And this time it's a throw for one Knoxville. Nice defense by Gabriel Claudio. Coach McKeever said Claudio loves conflict situations and is keen to take the ball into advanced areas. So even though he is at center back right now for Knoxville, expect him to press up if given the opportunity. Villalobos. Coach McKeever said that Villalobos really should have more goals this season but did score a screamer last week against Chattanooga Red Wolves. And it was just a sign, <laughs> really, that he should indeed uh, have more in his tally. Deleuze looks a little frustrated there with the call. Haiti International, seven caps, made his debut in 2021 for Haiti. One Knoxville excels in set piece opportunities, 12 set piece goals. That's tops in the league. Four of them from free kicks as Waldeck will take this one. That's mishandled, but a foul called as North couldn't grab it because he was bumped into. 
Mitch North, Coach Smith said, pulled the team together after Charlotte's opening goal last week. It was a banger by Mbuyu. And then after that, Central Valley Fuego able to respond with a 2-1 victory for their second straight win. Cromwell slipped there, but still finds Lemus. Deleuze, long ball, and headed by Claudio. Cromwell tries one, and nicely played by Derek Waldeck to find his keeper, Sean Lewis. Lewis was questionable for this match. Villalobos touches it on for Waldeck, but Lemus picks it off. Villalobos regains control for Knoxville. Illich was tangled up. And a foul called. Doesn't look like anyone will go in the book as of yet. Our head referee tonight is Mark Verso, assistant refs. Conrado Garcia, Clarence Clark, fourth official is Turan Ozdemir. Sam Fletcher taking this free kick, his first start of the season, fifth appearance for the Phoenix native. Waiting for the, there's another ball in the field to get cleared off before Fletcher's given the go ahead. And that was a frustrating free kick from Fletcher. Teammates didn't look too pleased with it. And it's a goal kick for Central Valley. Fuego is the team with the momentum. Came into today with the biggest win streak in the league at just two games and Adam Smith talked to him Thursday said no one's got a crystal ball but I feel good about the game I want this group to make a statement and beat a team two or three nil he said we're not who everyone thought we were and with their struggling start to the season Fuego really have shown that they are better than their record. Eck putting the pressure on Lewis here. Hurried, but able to get it to Callum Johnson. Hansen rolls it for Forbes. On rushing Lemus. Forbes into the area. And Callum Johnson comes away with it. James Thomas on the ball, or Frank Ross, correction. Frank Ross getting the start, his 11th. Illich plays it back. One Knoxville going for the 3 4 3 formation tonight. Illich. No look pass for Villalobos. Plays it forward for Waldeck. Likes to press forward on the left wing. Waldeck slips, and Forbes comes away with it. Burst of speed from Forbes. He's knocked down by Villalobos. Just a bit of a nudge, enough to earn the foul. Ilya Illich, just kind of a jack of all trades. He's an assistant coach for the team, a, a captain. And a forward, the Serbian international. Very close relationship with Mark McKeever as he played for him at Young Harris College in Georgia. So 
No score through the first 20 minutes of action here from Fresno. Battle in the bottom of the league in the League One standings. One Knoxville's ninth, Central Valley's 11, but the Fuego have a few games in hand. Opportunity here for Fuego. And Waldeck cuts it off. Long ball, Keegan is beaten to it by Deleuze. I asked Coach Smith who the unsung heroes were for his team. And for Fuego FC, the center back pairing of Cromwell and Deleuze has been good in this two game win streak. Not players who will show up on the score sheet, but have played good defense for Fuego. Waldeck, shadowed by Forbes. Hansen converges. And Fernandez recycles. Claudio wins the foul for Knoxville. One Knoxville went 11 2 and 1 last year. They were first in USL 2's South Central Division. Mark McKeever tasked for taking over this expansion team. McKeever was a USL League Two national champ with the Des Moines Menace back in 2021. Took a few players from that team for this Knoxville squad. Waldeck. Looking for an outlet. Back and forth between him and Villalobos. Fletcher. Skelton. And that is picked off. Adrian Vera. Victor Falk. Goes with the outside of the boot to Forbes. Has Lemus. Crosses it in. And no one's there. It's just past Eck. But signs of life for Fuego, who don't really have much going for them yet. But this one was a good pass and a good cross from Lemus. It almost looked like Eck tried a scorpion kick there. Tried to just flick it. It was all he could all he could do. It was a little bit too much on the cross from Lemus. Another El Mexicano corner kick, though, for Fuego, their second of the game. Omar Limus, right-footed in, swinger. Eck gets ahead to it, but then it's headed out for a deep throw. Maximus Eck has just been so good for Central Valley since joining from the academy. Youngest player in league history with two goals in League One. Falls for Forbes. Billy Forbes crosses it. And now it's Chavez. And his shot deflects out. Jordan Chavez, the lone Fuego player to make the USL League One Team of the Week in some pain after that challenge. This one fell to Forbes. He had plenty of space, was able to get past Waldeck. It was cleared, but only as far as Chavez, and it was a great challenge. Looked like maybe Skelton, as Chavez is still down and eventually helped up. Chavez team of the week performance last week against Charlotte. Had the game winning goal and an assist. Not bad for a central defender. Adam Smith told me that he put Chavez in the midfield in his first game in charge. That was the friendly against Morelia. 
because there, there are just too many central defenders on the roster for the Central Valley Fuego. And Chavez has really excelled playing further up the pitch. Fernandez, Villalobos, back to Fernandez. Skelton. A little bit too weak on the touch from Villalobos, but it's a long ball down the pitch headed by Keegan. Really well done by him to find Waldeck. Ross, Frank Ross, Waldeck crosses and caught by North. Trying to play quickly for Fuego. One Knox has the biggest opportunity of this game so far. A shot missed wide by Jake Keegan. It's the only shot of the game for One Knox. Throw in for Vera. Mark McKeever not far behind him. Finds Ozzy Ramos, the captain. Ramos, the offensive uh, creator for Central Valley. Leads the team with 17 chances created. Also leads in shots taken. Ramos, no goals yet. One assist, the 26-year-old from California. So another set-piece opportunity for Fuego. They've already had two corners. It'll either be Vera or Limos to take this free kick. Again, just four set-piece goals for Fuego FC. Least in the league. Whipped in, and DeLuce actually looked like he got a foot to it. And it's a goal kick. So it was Somar Leem who, who took it after Vera ran past the ball. A line drive free kick, and Francois DeLuce, DeLuce the 24-year-old defender from West Palm Beach and Haitian International able to get a foot to it, but nothing more. So still scoreless, 27 minutes in. Ramos tried to pounce on it. Victor Falk as well went for it, and he's the one who wins the foul for Fuego FC. So another dangerous free kick coming for Fuego FC as one Knoxville SC will have Gabriel Claudio in the book, his second yellow card of the season in his ninth appearance. Claudio receiving just his second start of the season from Mark McKeever. Commits the foul, gets the yellow card. He's the first one in the book tonight, and it's another dangerous free kick for Fuego FC. Plenty of men in the area for the team in green. Vera runs past it. The free kick is headed out by Claudio. And Villalobo tries to start the counter for Knoxville, but Hansen gets to it. Abdul Razak Cromwell, the other center back for Central Valley from Accra, Ghana. Ramos taps it forward for Eck, who loses it. Villalobos, long ball down the right wing, too long. Tried to find Frank Ross, Scotland International. Is, there's Adam Smith, who was supposed to take a trip to Europe with his wife. Uh, had to cancel that when Martin Vasquez got sacked and he took over as head coach for Fuego. 
Yeah. Yeah, Vasquez Vasquez was just uh, parted ways mutually with the team. It wasn't wasn't a firing in any of any sort. Throwing for Fuego FC. As Forbes just tosses it to Limus. Fuego FC trying to find an opener in the opening half hour. Eck taps it, looking for Chavez, but it's cleared. And chested down by Deleuze. Billy Forbes. Finds Eck. Maximus Eck taken down in the area, regains his footing. Eck still going, knocked down once more. But no penalty awarded. And a long try from Cromwell is shielded out. It'll be a deep throw for Fuego FC. Maximus Eck, one thing that Coach Smith talked about is his physicality. He has it. As he was knocked down, strong challenge from Skelton. No penalty awarded. Another sliding challenge from Skelton. Didn't result in anything. But really, the physicality is impressive by Eck. The fact that he was able to stand up after getting knocked down in the box is impressive. That's what you want from a striker, for them to, to fall down uh, if they have contact in the box. You want that penalty called. And then after that, he realized no foul. Okay, <laughs> I'll just get up and try another shot. Maximus X, 17-year-old out of Sierra Pacific High School. There is a hydration break. So 31 minutes in. It is a hot one in Fresno. So let's take a look at the schedules for both these teams coming up. I mentioned uh, a little bit one Knoxville going on a road trip. Uh, Central Valley, on the other hand, uh, have some games at home and on the road. Here's one Knoxville's upcoming schedule. This is the first of three games on the road. They travel to Union Omaha next week at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And then at Forward Madison at 5 p.m. Pacific the next Saturday before finally returning home to face Lexington. Then they get the Charlotte Independence, and then they travel to South Georgia Tormenta, the defending champs, on September 1st. But really, one Knoxville has to take advantage of a bit of a weaker schedule with what they have coming up. On the other hand, Central Valley Fuego FC will try to stay hot and make it a three-game winning streak tonight. If they can do that, they can make it four in a row next week at home against Chattanooga Red Wolves SC at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. Then South Georgia Tormenta on the road, Lexington on the road, Charlotte and Madison at home. Pretty much a full moon. I count that a full moon, anyhow, in Fresno. As we are at 8.09 Pacific time. So just about nightfall on the West Coast. No score here for Fresno as Sean Lewis will take this for one Knoxville. Rockford, Michigan native. Played with the Indy 11 uh, in the USL Championship before coming to Knoxville. He missed four matches in a row. And Peter Swinkles was forced into action. Four starts for him. Made nine saves. And Mark McKeever was impressed with Swinkles' ability to learn from mistakes and level up. Especially considering because he's a goalkeeper, he has, hasn't received the minutes that the other first-year pros have. Billy Forbes trying to work his way through a horde of pink shirts. And headed out by Chavez. 
Nil-nil here in the 35th minute from Fresno. Knoxville's been the closest with a Jake Keegan shot that just rolled wide. As Frank Ross takes it up the left channel. Guarded by Hansen and Hansen knocks it out for a Knoxville corner. Frank Ross really doing well there to earn the corner for Knoxville. He scored a brace against Charlotte back on June 17th. That was the last one Knoxville win 42 days ago. Ross to take the corner for one Knoxville. League leader in set piece goals. Tapped back, Waldeck tries via Lobos. His shot shielded out. Jimmy Villa Lobos scored a screamer last week in the 11th minute against the Chattanooga Red Wolves. The opening goal for one Knoxville in the 3-2 loss against his former club. He had the first laugh, unfortunately, for Knoxville. Chattanooga had the last laugh. It was a nice back and forth battle. A really, really good game. But unfortunately for Knoxville, it was their fourth straight defeat. Derek Waldeck to take this corner from the far side. Team leader with three assists. His first assist came against the Fuego. And this one's punched away. Lemus down the left side. And he falls down. There's Callum Johnson getting his 13th start. Johnson from England. New York Red Bulls Academy product. Had a goal last week against the Red Wolves. Put Knoxville up 2-1 in the 67th minute. Unfortunately, they could not hold on. Seven games without a win for one Knox SC. There's Maximus Eck, the Academy product, 17 years of age. Has not celebrated his 18th birthday yet. That'll be on August 8th. Could see an Academy product for one Knoxville tonight as Leo Santos looks to make his professional debut. Santos, a midfielder, the first ever one Knox Academy signing. I was back on March 15th. And a foul and a free kick coming for Knoxville. Still the only player in the book is Knoxville's Gabriel Claudio. Harold Hansen, 24-year-old Sassuolo Italy native. Adam Smith has been impressed by his ability to take on a new task in playing the six. He's not a defensive midfielder by trade. He's a right back. Illich able to play it off of Lee Moose. So Knoxville gets another corner. Frank Ross will take this one as the Scruffs try to draw first blood here in Fresno. Unbeaten against Fuego FC this season. A win and a draw. They won 1-0 last time they visited Fresno State Soccer Stadium. And headed away. Running out of time here in this first half in Fresno. Bromwell clears. 
Nice hold up play by Eck. Out for a throw. Mark McKeever happy to pick that one up. Forbes for Ramos. Eck taps it back to Ramos, but Fernandez rushes on to clear. Hansen, a nice turn. Falk. Headed out by Fletcher. Hansen chests it down, has a go. Bounces to Forbes. Forbes strikes. And it's deflects out for a corner. Couple chances there for Fuego. As Forbes had an opportunity. After Fletcher cleared, it was Hansen who decided why not. And it hit Chavez on the way through, fell to Forbes. And Knoxville getting a foot on it. So for Fuego, it's another El Mexicano corner kick for Adrian Vera. One assist this season. Came two games ago. Whips it in. And it deflects out. I believe it was Knoxville that knocked it out, so it will be a corner, but that one was dangerous and could have been an own goal. Victor Falk perhaps wanted a penalty there as we see the replay. It was a good delivery. Falk fell down. Some contact as Lemus will take this El Mexicano corner kick from the right side. Skelton heads away his delivery. Fuego have had a lot of possession for a team that doesn't excel in that department. Here's Forbes, left-footed cross, still loose in the box. Chavez trying to get to it. He slides down. And that one rolled out. So it's a deep throw in for Central Valley Fuego. 43rd minute here from Fresno. At this rate, the teams will head back to the locker rooms with a stalemate, nil-nil. Victor Falk. Lemus pops it into the area. Ramos volleys it out for a goal kick. Ozzy Ramos, the team leader in shots and chances created, looking for her, his first goal of the campaign. Ramos, the California native, went to San Diego State and Seattle University. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of USL League One action on ESPN Plus, the home to the USL, La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. Thanks for tuning into this match. Here from Fresno. Fuego FC looking for their third straight victory. One Knoxville SC trying to snap a four game skit. For one Knox, here's Illich. Ross has Waldeck, crosses it in. Villalobos shielded out by Cromwell. Important block for the Fuego FC defender. Villalobos trying to make it two and two after scoring last week against his former club. And an easy foul call on Chavez as he goes into the book here in the 45th minute. Jordan Chavez with his fifth yellow card of the season. Back 
at the foul by Chavez. Fletcher was knocked down on the play. So he wins the free kick in the attacking half. 4-1 Knox SC. Villalobos takes it. Line drive, free kick, easily handled by Mitch North. North always looking to move the ball quickly for Fuego. Hansen gets it. Limus for Forbes. Down the right wing, Billy Forbes stumbles. As we will have five minutes of stoppage time at Fresno State Soccer Stadium. So five more minutes for either of these teams to find an opener in this first half. Ross crosses it in, but headed away by Deleuze. And headed once more by Falk. Falls to Villalobos. Ross with Waldeck trailing and Hansen covering him. Ross crosses it in, headed, and Falk gets to it. Unfortunately, no one was there for Knoxville after Keegan tried to be unselfish. First minute of stoppage time is through. Claudio with the throw in for one Knox. Headed down by Illich and cleared by Hansen. Not sure if either side will make changes at the half. We'll have to just wait and find out. Both teams look solid on the defensive end and rather uninspired offensively with very few chances, but perhaps that's just the solid defense that we're seeing from both sides. Cromwell comes away with it for Fuego and finds Eck but Fernandez clears, and it's out for a Fuego throw. Cromwell tries to switch play to the right, but it's chested down by one Knox. Keegan, the team's leading scorer, finds Waldeck, and he runs into a brick wall in Omar Limus. Lima said, you shall not pass. Waldeck crosses it in. Headed by Illich. And cleared by, the, by Fuego. Fernandez. Back to Lewis, who's been untested so far for one Knox SC. Lewis, a 71.4% save percentage, 40 saves in his 16 starts. Yellow card shown, second for Central Valley. This one is on Adrian Vera. That's his fourth yellow. So no goals, three yellow cards so far in Fresno. Claudio for one Knox is in the book. Chavez and Vera for Fuego FC. Ross has a go and skies it. Not a bad idea since opportunities have been scarce in this opening half. Frank Ross has three goals this season. The former Scotland Youth International. Only a minute remaining of stoppage time. Chavez finds Ramos with the header as Illich is down, but gets up. Ramos slips it for Vera. Fuego FC trying to find something in this last minute of stoppage time. And that's out. 
Fuego FC certainly thinks it's their corner, and it will be. And here we go. Time for another El Mexicano corner kick for your Fuego. So one more El Mexicano corner kick for Central Valley Fuego FC here in the first half as Omar Limus will take it. Fifth corner for Fuego FC of the half. Limus unleashes. Ramos trying to get ahead to it, but Skelton was there. Callum Johnson has it, and whistle is blown for halftime. So at the end of 45, it's nil-nil between Central Valley Fuego FC and one Knoxville SC. A defensive slugfest. The best chance came for one Knoxville's Jake Keegan early on who rolled a shot wide. His team leading five goals, trying to add his sixth and trying to score for the first time in a couple months. Will be, so no score. Here from Fresno, second half, when we come back in a while. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league, the USL Super League, built for the future of women's soccer, bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? Let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Welcome back to Fresno, California, home of Central Valley Fuego FC. Deadlocked nil-nil with one Knoxville SC in this defensive slugfest. Fuego looking for their third straight win, but it looks good for Knoxville so far if they want to snap their four-game losing streak. And now we'll have Jack Edwards with the midweek highlights. Week 20 of the USL League One got off to a bang on Wednesday with a pair of matches. First off, North Carolina taking on top of the table, Northern Colorado. What a free kick, Louis Perez. In first half stoppage time, puts that one away for goal number five on the year, and they head into the break with a one-goal lead against the top side across USL League One. Now, second half stoppage time now. It's the 95th minute. Olex Anderson, little patient and a burst of speed, gets in one-on-one -on -one with Lalo Delgado, and he is lethal from here. Rounds the keeper, taps it home, his 10th of the season, ends the Hailstorm's record-setting 12-match unbeaten streak, moves to second in the league with those three points. Olex Anderson, a huge one on Wednesday. The other game on Wednesday, another great one. Forward Madison taking on South Georgia Tormenta. This is right after kickoff. 
Andrew Wheeler Amunu is going to drop this one over the top for Christian Chaney. Nice first touch with his chest, even better second one with his right foot. He gets his sixth goal of the season to open the scoring in the 17th second of the match. More on that in just a moment. Gets them off to a blitzing start. Responding in turn, though, was Matthias Cassini. Gets in one-on-one -on -one against his former side. The former Flamingo makes it 1-1 in the eighth minute. Returning from injury in style. Back into the 11 for Tormenta. Second half will jump to now. Jackson Curry, they're trying to find a way to break open the match. Puts a beautiful ball in the box. Great header by Isaiah Sterling. They take the 2-1 lead, complete the comeback effort. They're up two goals to one. Still second half, still searching for another goal to push it a bit further. Switch of play. Jackson Curry again. Going to be a continuous story throughout these highlights. Kingsford Ajay, they'll play amongst themselves. And what a pass right here. Across goal makes it easy for Sterling. Curry, Sterling part two. They take a 3-1 to one lead. No team had scored more than two goals against Madison this year. They're up 3-1 to one at their home turf. They're searching, though, for the killing blow. What a burst of speed. Puts the afterburners on Nick Okoto. Finds Jackson Curry, and he gets a goal himself. They take that one four goals to one. Huge result for them. On the losing side was Christian Chaney, but he scored 17 seconds into the match. And you wonder, is that the fastest in USL League One history? It's right up there. We can double back and show you some history. Ronaldo Damas for North Texas back in 2019, September 10th, 2019. It's going to be the first goal of this one. Just a nice ball out onto the right-hand side. Look in the middle at number 11 and his movement. About to drive inside a brilliant header from Damas. They take the lead there. He'd go on to score three goals and have an assist in this match in a season where he'd have 16 goals himself. Just faster than Chaney at 17 seconds. A great goal for him there. It was a great season for North Texas. Still the most points in league history. They got that back in 2019. Jump three years and a day later. Tarn Weir for FC Tucson on September 11th, 2022. Two-hour weather delay. This is now kickoff. Seven seconds into this match, he's going to open the scoring. Beautiful ball in behind. He picks this one out and a fantastic first time strike. Seven seconds into the match. Hard to beat that. Takes down Omaha, his first and only goal of the 2022 season. Not sure how you score one much faster than that. A really fun time looking back through some USL League One history. Well, we'll take a quick break, and we'll have some news and notes for you on the other side. Stick with us on ESPN+. Plus. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league, the USL Super League, built for the future of women's soccer, bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league, the USL Super League, 
Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? No score from Fresno at the half, so let's take a look at the news and notes from around USL League One. First, the Spokane Velocity FC. Last week, they unveiled the club's official branding. So Spokane Velocity, you see the logo on your screen. So that's to prepare to kick off in 2024 at the new One Spokane Stadium. There'll be one of 14 teams now joining Santa Barbara as the two new ones. Icy Hot Start. Northern Colorado Hailstorm tie the 2022 Greenville Triumph for best start through 16 matches in league history. And then Player of the Week, Leo Castro. His brace led the Triumph. There you see him, along with Jordan Chavez, the lone player from tonight's Fuego 1 Knoxville match who made the Team of the Week last week. Chavez, the central defender, had a goal and an assist against Charlotte, his first career two-goal involvement game. And looking around the league, huge scoreline uh, for the Charlotte Independents, 4-1 over the Northern Colorado Hailstorm. That's to bring them within two points of the Hailstorm atop the league table. Also a draw between Lexington and Richmond, Chattanooga and North Carolina. It was North Carolina with the 2-1 win. Madison and Greenville sharing the spoils. And then Union Omaha with a late winner against the defending champ, South Georgia Tormenta. And then looking ahead this upcoming week in USL League One, Wednesday, Union Omaha taking on Lexington SC at 5 o'clock Pacific. And then on Saturday, you see five matches at 4, 5, and then 7.30 with Central Valley Fuego uh, taking on Chattanooga Red Wolves SC at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. So again, no score. Here from Fresno, but when we return, we'll find out if either team can find a winner or if Fuego FC and One Ox SC will share the spoils in Fresno. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love? Ready for more players and more teams? Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities? This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Ready for second half kick here from Fresno. No score at halftime. And let's take a look at the first half highlights from Fresno State Soccer Stadium. One Knoxville SC and Central Valley Fuego, both bottom of the table. Fuego FC trying to stay hot after two straight wins. Billy Forbes gets this one in the area and squares it across. Tried to clear it, Knoxville did, but Chavez is able to get an opportunity. Nice tackle, though, by Skelton. Jordan Chavez, again, scored last week. Goal and an assist. 
in a Team of the Week performance. But Knoxville's, they've had the better chances thus far. This is Waldeck with the opportunity, but gloved easily by Mitch North. And then on the other side, Francois Deleuze with a chance for Fuego FC. And that one, there's been, a, there's been a few in the box for Fuego FC that have been some close calls. That one, not really one of them, as Victor Falk did draw some hard contact, but there's been some, some questionable uh, contact. That one was another good chance for Knoxville. A good save, though. A good shield by Cromwell. It was, an, it was a nice centering pass, and then Villalobos got the opportunity. So your first half stats... Again, no goals for either side. Shots pretty much even. Possession, as always, to one Knoxville, although Fuego had some nice spells of possession as well. Yellow cards, two for Fuego and one for Knoxville. So a huddle for Central Valley Fuego as they look to make this three in a row. Again, this two-game streak they're on, it's their first win streak of the year. Three in a row would be incredible for a team that started so poorly. As for one Knoxville, they have lost four straight. Jake Keegan, their talisman, five goals. He had the early opportunity for one Knox SC. Can he get on the score sheet for the 28th time in his USL League One tenure? Second leading scorer in USL history. Couple subs for Fuego at halftime as Jesus Partida, the midfielder, checks in for Adrian Vera and Alexis Cerritos, the midfielder, number 11, checks in for Jordan Chavez who had, again, a goal and an assist last week. He is now on the bench for Central Valley as Adam Smith tries to switch it up. There's one of your changes, Jesus Partida in, 24-year-old from Reno, Nevada. That was a hard challenge as one Knoxville gets it back. Player still down for one Knoxville. That's Frank Ross, the Scotland international. Last played for Go Ahead Eagles in the Dutch top flight. Hobbling up and running it off. This is his 11th start. Did not start last match for Knox, Knoxville. Again, five changes in the starting 11 for Mark McKeever's squad. The most he's made from game to game this season. Claudio getting a second start of the campaign. Down the right flank. Falk covering him. Sidestepped by Claudio. Now he's double teamed and it's knocked out for a deep throw. Actually, this could be a corner. It was just to the left of the corner flag, so it's a corner and an early opportunity for one Knox. Adrian. Adrian Vera was one of the substitutes. Jordan Chavez, the other one for Central Valley. But Knoxville, no changes after the first half. Waldeck with the short corner. Villalobos tried to hit it well, but mishit it and skied it. Trying to recreate what he did last week against Chattanooga, and it did not add up this time. It was a good chance because it, it gave him, it was an really smart set piece by one Knox to give him that open look it did not make it count Mitch North boots that one headed by Claudio 
Keegan looking to take this throw quickly for Knoxville, but we'll roll it back to Claudio. Not a whole lot of uh, nil-nil games for these teams this season. 25 goals allowed for Central Valley Fuego. 26 for one Knoxville. Five clean sheets for one Knoxville, only one for Central Valley Fuego. Limus, looked like it drew a deflection and it will be a Here corner. First Here of the half for Fuego, Fuego FC. FC corner kick. So with no Adrian Vera, he was replaced at halftime. It'll be Ozzy Ramos to take this corner who wears the captain's armband tonight. Ramos with one assist for Fuego FC. Team leader in chances created, looking to create one here in the opening five minutes of the second half. Knoxville defended the corner well. And Waldeck knocks that one back to Forbes. There's Jesus Partida, 24-year-old, 17th appearance. He had 14 starts coming into tonight and did not start this match. Forbes pounces on that mistake. Forbes looking for Eck. And a diving stop by Sean Lewis. Eck, though, is knocked down. Clutching his face is Lewis. And Eck in the face of Danny Fernandez. Now Skelton coming, and Ramos there as well. As our head official, Mark Verso, tries to keep this at just a slight altercation and keep it from turning into an old-fashioned brouhaha. As Eck was trying to pounce on the pass, and ended up making contact with Sean Lewis, and a red is awarded, straight red for Maximus Eck. The 17-year-old in his fourth start at professional soccer is sent off for the collision with one Knox SC goalkeeper, Sean Lewis. So what happened there? It was a great ball from Billy Forbes. Little did he know what it would lead to. Eck coming by, tripped over the face of Sean Lewis, who's just coming off a concussion. And Fuego FC will have to play with 10 men for the final 40 minutes. That's the sixth red card of the season for Central Valley Fuego, the most in the league. Eck can't believe it. The Academy product who had scored two in his last two matches. The youngest player in league history with two goals is seeing red after 51 minutes. Knoxville trying to seize the opportunity. They'll get 40 minutes to try to break down Central Valley. And it's not the first time uh, that Central Valley Fuego FC has received a red card in Fresno against one Knoxville. It was the last time these two teams faced off at Fresno State Soccer Stadium. It was a, it was a really early red card, it was actually Mohamed uh, Dabo for Fuego. As that opportunity 
Goes by the wayside. Callum Johnson with a nice strike, but it just sails over the bar. Oh, Johnson saw the window, and Mitch North just saw it fly over the crossbar. So one Knoxville unbeaten against Central Valley Fuego FC this season. 1-1 one, one draw on April 13th. 1-0 win last time these two teams faced in Fresno. And Fuego FC was forced to play with 10 men for 80 plus minutes and nearly salvaged a draw but for one Knoxville SC it was Yesen Vanderplaum who's out with a hip injury who scored the stoppage time winner in that game Knoxville had plenty of opportunities in that match they had seven shots on goal but didn't score until the Vander Plaum stoppage time winner. Claudio on the right flank, left footed cross, and Cromwell shields it away. Cerritos. Tried to get it, but it stays with Knoxville. Not anymore as that pass finds Falk. Fletcher. Gets a little bump. Fernandez. And Skelton, Newcastle, England native. Long ball from Skelton. And Lemus takes that away as Knoxville wanted a foul. Forbes down the far sideline and offside. So no changes at halftime for one Knoxville, but they'll make a couple changes here as Rudy Castro will make his debut, the 24-year-old who signed with one Knoxville this week, replacing Jake Keegan, who had an early chance. Also on is Jan Eric Linos, that's him, the Felsberg Germany native. As Gabriel Claudio, who received his second start of the season, comes off for Linos. But Rodolfo Rudy Castro will look to make an impact up top for one Knoxville. Linos into the mix, sir. And that falls. Ross. And it's shot blocked. Another opportunity via Lobos sends it over the bar. So some reinforcements up top for one Knoxville SC. Gio Calixtro, who's on the bench today, signed with one Knoxville on July 10th. 24-year-old forward Rudy Castro signed this week from San Jose Quakes. Uh, San Jose Earthquakes 2 and Mark McKeever said that with two new strikers joining the team I feel as though we can provide more of a threat in and around the 18 yard box which has been the difference between winning and losing for us they just haven't had that finishing touch offensively Castro has a go it's on frame but comfortable for Mitch North so first shot of Rudy Castro's Knoxville career is on target. 
that had to be promising for one Knoxville. It's just about the first or second shot on target we've seen this entire match. I think it's number two. Yeah, and Eric Linos subbing on for one Knoxville. 11th appearance for him, had an assist last match. Cross into the area, and the volley sails wide. And there's a hefty push from Sam Fletcher. This game is getting heated in Fresno. Coach McKeever did say that Fletcher has an aggressive nature, mostly talking about his positioning. And that time went into the back of a Fuego player. And Sam Fletcher goes into the book. So here's what led to the card. Cerritos using his body and just gets a knee from behind from Fletcher and the Central Valley captain, Ozzy Ramos, defending his player. Gets up in the face of Fletcher. USL's second annual summer showcase signals the start of the sprint to the finish. Philip Goodrum and FC Tulsa head west to face Romario Williams and Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. FC Tulsa and Switchbacks FC Wednesday, August 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. That'll be it. Midnight Pacific time. No, did I do that right? How does time work again? Six, six, six p.m. Six p.m. Pacific time. And a change for Fuego here. Ozzy Ramos coming off. And Otoniel Jaramillo into the game. The forward from Mexico. Final 30 minutes of action. Juan Knoxville on the charge. Playing with the man advantage. As Linos loses out to Jesus Partida. If Fuego are somehow able to win their third straight game despite falling down a man, that would certainly be something. But unfortunately for them, the player they lose is a player that scored for them twice in the past two games in Maximus Act, the 17-year-old from Sierra Pacific High School, the local product. And then the other player who scored in their last two games, Jordan Chavez, he got pulled at the half. Johnson tries to play it to the left side and a cross in it falls Ross loses out Frank Ross tried to control it and Partita came away with it one nil one Knoxville SC on a seven game winless streak they drew against Union Omaha Richmond kickers and North Carolina before losing four straight. As Fuego with another change, Billy Forbes is out of the game. Zahir Vasquez is in. So now Fuego have lost their two goal scorers and to the bench they send Billy Forbes who had an assist last week. But switching things up has worked for Adam Smith so far in his tenure as head coach of Central Valley Fuego. They've won their last two games 2-1 to one, under Smith with fresh new faces and hoping that these changes can inspire something. Also possible tactical changes as well. Down, down a man having to play with 10 after the red card for Maximus Eck. Hanson trying to make a run. 
And he's taken down in the area. No penalty though. Instead, just a corner kick coming for Fuego FC. As we watch what happened. Oh, it was a bit of a high boot there from Skelton. He's had a couple tricky challenges in the 18. Jesus Partida, one assist this season. 24-year-old from Reno, Nevada. And the El Mexicano corner comes to nothing for Fuego. They still have possession, though. Ross trying to weave his way through traffic, and a quick yellow comes out for Zahir Vasquez, his second of the season. Fourth card of the game for Fuego FC as it just looked like he clipped the Knoxville attacker from behind. And Waldeck has a chance here from a set piece for one Knoxville. Looking for their 13th set piece goal this season. Waldeck with three assists, swings it in. Castro tried to flick it on. Instead, it's cleared by Fuego FC. Linos charging forward. Johnson plays it back. Waldeck. And across into the area. As Vasquez corrals it for Central Valley Fuego. Jaramillo got a touch on that and wins the foul for Fuego FC. Lots of fouls for one Knoxville. 293 coming into today, most in the league. They also came in with the most yellow cards, 62. They've picked up two more thus far. It's actually Fuego FC with four cards, three yellow, one red. They've been punished more heavily this evening. 66 minute of action. We've got the first 65 without a goal. As Knoxville SC with a draw would snap a four match losing streak with a win would snap a seven game winless skit. Linos under pressure from Cerritos. As a Fuego player is down behind this play. And it's rolled out of play as we'll check on the injured player for Fuego FC. Goalie, that's a real injury. Hey, hey, Holding his ankle. I believe that's Lemus. Don't have the number on him though. Jordan Skelton tending to him. It is Lee Moose. Let's see what happened there. Ah, Fletcher stepped up and Lee Moose just ran into him. So I hope Omar is all right. Really, really unfortunate for Fuego FC having to play with 10 men, especially losing Maximus Eck, who scored his first professional goal against Lexington just two games ago. It was the USL League One goal of the week as well. A great finish into the top left corner. Eck had the equalizer last week against Charlotte. We look at Adam Smith on the bench. Adam Smith was the 
Fuego FC Academy Sporting Director, the first year of the Academy's exist existence. But th then when Fuego parted ways with Martin Vasquez, Smith became the head coach and brought in Maximus Eck to the fold, trusting the Academy player. Good to see Lee Moose up and walking. So expect that to be added on in stoppage time. We had five minutes in the first half. Central Valley Fuego came into this game 11th in the table, 16 points, 5, 11, and 1. 5, 8, and 7, 1 Knox SC. They're ninth with 22 points. But if Knoxville is able to get three points from this game, which Mark McKeever would just love, they would be at 25 points and therefore just three points behind Union Omaha, who sit in sixth just above the playoff line. So despite seven games without a win, Knoxville's still in it because of their hot start to the season. They've just cooled off a bit since then, to say the least. Fernandez, Skelton, Falk putting the pressure on, but Fletcher is found. Villalobos. Trying to find Linos, keeps it in, and then runs back up the sideline. Fletcher trying to switch play to the left, but not enough weight on his pass. And that looked like a pretty clear handball from Danny Fernandez, so he goes into the book. Not, not close enough to the goal for that to be a hand of God, but uh, Fernandez, <laughs> that handball was pretty clear. That is just his fourth of the season. Yep, not going to get away with that. <laughs> so that is the third yellow card of the game for one Knoxville, each team with three yellows. Vasquez slips it back. That's headed on. And Vasquez will let it roll out for a corner kick. Cerritos looks a little upset with him, perhaps wanting Vasquez to take advantage of the situation and cross it in to give Alexis Cerritos a chance. Instead, it is another El Mexicano corner kick for the home side, Central Valley Fuego FC. Despite being down a man, they'll try to take the lead here. It's Partida. Sends it in. High arcing corner kick. Deleuze gets ahead to it. It's chested down by Fletcher. He clears. Fuego asking for a handball, but no call. And that one, harmless. It finds Lewis. Well, good to see that Sean Lewis is OK, especially after getting kicked in the head by Maximus Eck. In the 51st minute, Sean Lewis, that, it was a bit of a scary moment because he was holding his face for a bit, and he's just coming off a concussion, and you hate for players to get back-to-back -back concussions. That is not what you want. But he's able to stay in the game. This is sloppy from Knoxville. Hansen, the defensive midfielder, pressing up for Fuego. Has it taken away from him, though? Castro with possession, plays it off of Vasquez and out for a throw. So Knoxville going with a couple more changes as one of the new additions, Gio Calixtro, comes in for Frank Ross. Calixtro, out of Cornelius, Oregon, 23-year-old from FC Tucson, 
in USL's League Two. <laughs> Other changes, Kyle McDowell in for Sam Fletcher. McDowell making his ninth appearance, the defender from West Sussex, England, former Scotland and Northern Ireland Youth International. So Knoxville's made four changes. And Spot Calixtro with those bright pink cleats, holds it up, has a go, and sails it. Gio Calixtro into the game and has an early opportunity. He signed with one Knoxville on July 10th. As we'll run that replay back for you. Good centering pass. Calixtro just unable to settle it. Ball was still bouncing, and that's why it went, went high. And Jaramillo draws the foul for Fuego. Jaramillo making his 11th appearances out of Tejupilco, Mexico on the bench last week against Charlotte. Jaramillo's first goal of the season, he scored two, came against one Knoxville back on April 13th in Knoxville. Only 15 minutes left in the 90 minutes. Failed clearance there by Deleuze, but it is cleared by Fuego and flicked on by Cerritos. And for Knoxville, this has got to be deja vu all over again. Struggling to score against 10-man Central Valley Fuego. Linos' delivery headed and saved by a diving Mitch North. It was Calixtro who got his head to it, but Mitch North prevents the goal and keeps this one level at nil-nil. Best opportunity of the night for Knoxville, perhaps. Still plenty of time for more. Calixtro has not scored yet for one Knoxville. That one sneaks into the area and Cromwell clears. Dowell gearing up for quite the long throw, and it's headed out. Nice back heel. McDowell forces it into the 18, but Hansen clears without a problem as Central Valley Fuego FC looks to make a change here with 13 minutes remaining in the 90. Andrew Forth, the California native, will be checking in for Omar Limus. It's the sixth change for Fuego FC. Forth out of Cal Poly, came from Orlando City B. Spent time in the Orlando City Soccer Club Academy. One Knox SC threatening. Linos with a high cross that was never in any danger for Mitch North. 
Well, Linos does provide a bit of a threat down that right side. Had the assist in the 67th minute last week for Johnson's goal. Callum Johnson scored to put Knoxville up 2-1 against the Red Wolves. They would lose that match 3-2. Despite three goals last week, Knoxville still with a zero, a goose egg tonight, even against the 10 men of Fuego FC, which they've had to play with for basically this entire second half. Aramillo. And that's off of Vasquez for a Knoxville throw, taken quickly. Calixtro crosses up Hansen, and Illich lost it. Cerritos with a fancy turn and a foul called. He wanted to play the advantage. And he's frustrated with the stoppage. Fuego FC trying to do the impossible and win three in, a, three in a row for the first time this year and trying to do that down a man. They were down 10 against Lexington two games ago for 60 minutes and still got the win. But this one, goals appear to not be in the cards tonight. Just about 10 minutes left in stoppage time and we're still scoreless. Rolls out for a goal kick for Sean Lewis and one Knoxville. Mark McKeever knew this wouldn't be easy for Knoxville. He knew that Central Valley Flego we're playing their best football. As a change to be had. One more for Knoxville. As Matt Vowinkle will check in for Ilya Illich. So the Serbian International checks out for the new Hyde Park, New York native. Vowinkle from the Long Island Rough Riders of USL's League Two. Drafted by Cincinnati FC in 2021, but returned to Hofstra to finish his college career. Bo Winkle making his 12th appearance. He's got two starts and one assist. Here's Linos. And a throw for Fuego. Can't watch the match? Turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesday nights at 7 Eastern. Plus, hear live matches from the USL, MLS, English Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the SXM app. And we got another yellow. It's Fernandez's second yellow, and he's sent off. So it'll be 10 against 10 for the final 10 or so. Fernandez just got a yellow card in the 70th minute for a pretty obvious handball. If he hadn't have done that, then that yellow card doesn't turn red. Just a throw in and... Oh, not much there from Fernandez. I was about to say, you got to be careful when working on a yellow, but if there was a foul there, I'm not sure it was him. But yellow is the call on Fernandez, and you got to think back to that earlier handball. So it looked like Knoxville had the advantage, and they did for about 30 minutes, almost exactly 30 minutes, playing with a man up. As Fuego FC threatening here after Knoxville goes down to 10. So we're doing a little 10 on 10 here in some uh, USL After Dark. 
where things get weird. El Mexicano corner kick coming for El Fuego. Chance for Fuego FC now with a little bit more even as Jeremio tried to flick that one in. Partida crosses and headed by Deleuze, but his effort goes wide. The defender, the center back, Francois Deleuze, with the best chance so far of the night for Fuego FC. He got behind his defender and got ahead to it, but just glanced off his head and out for a goal kick. So to recap, we have we have two red cards, a whole load of yellow cards, but still no goals here from Fresno. And this nil-nil match between Central Valley Fuego FC and one Knoxville SC, as the Fue as Fuego is looking for its third straight win, and Knoxville's they're okay with a draw, honestly, at this point, trying to knock off a four-game skid. Victor Falk. That's Vasquez looking for Partida. Or perhaps Jaramillo and just sent it long. It will be another El Mexicano corner for Fuego. They've had plenty. Corner number 10, double digits in the El Mexicano department as Partida sends it in. And that one's headed by Deleuze. He got something on it. Jaramillo looking to square up a shot, instead crosses in, and that's headed out for another corner kick. Number 11 coming up for Fuego FC. El Mexicano getting plenty of shout outs tonight. The shirt sponsor for Fuego FC. Partida's been busy taking corners from both sides. He just was on the near side, now he's on the far side. Does have one assist this season, loops that one in, and Knoxville takes care of it. Chance for a counter. Castro plays the ball forward, racing to it Cromwell as he sends it back to Mitch North. Just four minutes left of the 90 and then stoppage time, which should be again about five minutes after a lengthy injury break. Omar Limus has since been replaced, but was able to run that injury off. So hopefully it's not anything serious and maybe just a knock. Nice ball there, but Knoxville able to recover. McDowell. Linos for Calixtro and back to Linos. I asked Coach McKeever what made Fuego so hard to break down uh, when they were down 10 last time in Fresno as McDowell has that shielded away. And he said it wasn't that they were hard to break down, they just missed opportunities. Well, tonight it has been the opposite in that Fuego just have been hard to break down. Knoxville had a couple opportunities, a couple gleaming moments for one Knox that they just couldn't convert. Castro put one on frame. Calixtro was close. But now with Knoxville down to 10 men themselves, it becomes a bit tougher. They don't have the advantage anymore. Calixtro, back to Linos. Waldeck tries to play it in. Deleuze kicked it up, and Hansen clears. Does find Jaramillo, and he tried to feed it for Vasquez, who looks to put the pressure on Lewis. 
but he comfortably finds Linos. Entering the 89th minute here from Fresno, still nil-nil. But a chance for Fuego, the home side. The fans at Fresno cheering them on, but Partida's cross is shielded away. Fuego able to keep possession. Can they make it three in a row with a late winner? Cromwell, left side of the area, crosses out of play. It's a goal kick for one Knox SC. That time the center back, Abdul Razak Cromwell, pressing forward and just unable to provide a good service. Fuego were not hesitant. They charged forward with that attack, but Knoxville, on the other hand, pa more patient. They're a team that thrives on possession, but can they put one away and snap a seven-match winless streak? There is still time for a winner. Waldeck finds Castro. Bounces to Castro. Villalobos. Linos. The turn, the feed. Calixtro taken down in the area. It's a penalty for one Knox SC, earned by Gio Calixtro. And a chance for a stoppage time winner for Juan Knox. That seven game winless streak perhaps can meet its end. Nice feed by Callum Johnson. And Partida just too tough on the challenge. So one Knoxville once again in Fresno. Fuego fell down to 10 men. Stoppage time. They had a winner on April 30th in the same situation. This time it's 10 on 10, and it's Rudy Castro, who just signed this week for one Knoxville from San Jose Earthquakes 2. Scored three goals this season for San Jose in 17 games. One Knoxville leads the league in penalties Six for seven, trying to make it seven of eight to end that seven match winless streak. Mitch North has not saved a penalty this season for Fuego FC. He points to his left. Castro goes the other way and tucks it in. And just like that, it's deja vu all over again for one Knox SC as they go ahead in stoppage time against the shorthanded Fuego. It's Rudy Castro with his first one Knox SC goal. And they can smell the seven game winless streak coming to an end. North had pointed to his left and Castro went right with it to North's right. And that's exactly where he wasn't. You can hear the chance. Let's go Knoxville from the one Knox SC contingent that made the trip all the way out to Fresno. First goal for Rudy Castro as a member of one Knox SC, and it is a crucial one as Fuego look to respond. And they don't have a lot of time left, just a minute and a half before the final whistle is likely blown. Here's Hansen. Important clear there for Knoxville. I asked Mark McKeever what it would mean for him to get the three points this week. He said, if I put my hand on the table, me, myself, 
me, Nevada Cullen, if I put my hand on the table, Mark said he would bite it off. That's how badly he wants those three points. But an opportunity coming here for Central Valley Fuego as Cerritos earns the free kick. So it's Cerritos to take the free kick. He could go for goal. Instead, he lobs it in. It's headed out. Hansen, he won't get it. Time running out for Central Valley. One Knox SC, one blow of the final whistle away from ending this rough run. It's a long kick from Lewis, who made his return after missing four matches. And he has been excellent in goal for one Knoxville. Free kick coming for one Knox SC. Stoppage time, penalty kick. Rudy Castro in his One Knox debut. He signed for them this week. And he, as it stands now, has the winner for One Knox SC. Taken quickly. Waldeck just lobs it. It'll be a goal kick. And we'll see if Mitch North even gets to take it. There was plenty of time uh, in between the penalty call and the time the penalty was taken, so that allows these few extra seconds to tick on as Knoxville looks to add a second. Castro down the left side. Villalobos will just run to the corner flag. Time wasting at its finest. But breaking away with it is Vasquez. Cromwell. Fuego FC has to make something happen here to try to snatch a draw at the death. North chested it down. Boots it long. And there it is. The final whistle. And oh, is it sweet for one Knox SC as they snap a seven game winless streak and a four game losing streak with a stoppage time penalty from Rudy Castro and a one nil win for Mark McKeever and one Knox SC on the road in Fresno as they have earned seven points against Fuego this season and six of them came at Fresno State Soccer Stadium. Man of the match presented by American Business Machines for Central Valley is Adrian Vera. Vera put in a shift in the wide areas for Fuego. Man of the match for Knoxville SC. That has to be Rudy Castro in his debut. The penalty winner. Play of the match and save of the match is presented by American Business Machines. Central Valley's Mitch North coming up big. This was very important earlier. Linos sending it in and the header by Calixtro. This was the best second half opportunity from open play for Knox SC as Mitch North made an unbelievable save. Linos with the delivery. Calixtro put it on frame, tested the keeper and North stood tall to keep it nil-nil at the time. And we'll take a quick break, but your final score again at full time after stoppage time, one nil, one Knox SC.
gets the victory over Fuego FC thanks to a Rudy Castro penalty kick. And that seven game winless streak is no more. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. It was a wacky game in Fresno, but one Knox SC came out on top. They celebrate with their one Knox SC fans. The Scruffs are happy after that win as we take a look at how it all went down. It was wacky in Fresno. There was plenty of action. Not a lot of goals, but plenty of action, trust me. Early on, one Knox with the ball. Waldeck squares it for Villalobos, but Cromwell that was very important at the time, got in the way. Later in the game, one knocks with a strike. This time, Walde uh, actually, Callum Johnson with a strike that just sailed high of the bar. One knocks was close plenty. Fuego didn't have a ton of opportunities. This looked like one, and then Maximus Eck accidentally kicked Sean Lewis in the face. Straight red card for Eck. He exits in the 51st minute, so. 40 minutes for one Knox to try to crack down and oh wait hold on another red card this one's one Knox SC as Fernandez exits after his second yellow so 10 on 10 and in the 92nd minute it's a great feed from Johnson and Partita's challenge was just too much on Calixtro who steps up but Rudy Castro the debutante from San Jose Earthquakes 2 his first game ends in a penalty winner for one Knox SC. As we take a look at the full-time stats from Fresno, one goal for one Knox was enough. 15 shots to eight for Fuego SC. Four of them on target for one Knox. No shots on target for Fuego FC, who saw their couple goal scorers leave early due to a red card and a substituted halftime of Chavez. Possession dominated by one Knox, of course. So, it was a wild one. Lots of red cards, yellow cards, plenty of action in that department. Not a lot of goals, though. No one wanted to score from open play. <laughs> There's the red card for Eck. Instead, it was Castro with the penalty winner for one Knox SC as their losing streak comes to an end. A 1-0 win against Fuego FC. Thanks for tuning in from Fresno. I'm Nevada Cullen saying so long and have a good night. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.